Welcome to the Pixel Retentive Podcast, where we, a business owner and an artist, discuss the business of art and the art of business. Hey friends, I'm Carl, founder of Epic Made. And I'm Ross, creative director at Epic Made, and we are the hosts of the Pixel Retentive Podcast, where we share our thoughts on creativity, art, and business. Past guests include Marcy Selzberg of Blah Blah Blah, Joe Weaver of OceanT.com, and Rebecca Blake of the Graphic Artists Guild. We are forever grateful for the sponsors of our podcast, and we are always looking for new sponsors. Uh, and as always, this episode is brought to you by the creative gurus at Epic Made. Epic Made is a collaborative of expert artists and animators who help brands tell powerful and engaging stories. We've demonstrated our expertise in visual storytelling, fantasy pop culture, and detailed world building in collaboration with some of the biggest entertainment brands on planet Earth, including Sci-Fi, Nickelodeon, and TNT. Visit getepicmade.com and let's collaborate on your next creative campaign. Hell yeah. <laughs> so with us with us today, we have Duke <laughs> Davis. Duke, Duke Davis, now that Carl's not coughing. <laughs> uh, uh, he is the channel personality of One Shot Questers, a Dungeons & Dragons YouTube channel built around sketch comedy. He's the leading cause of Paladins throwing it back and Wizards dying of 1d4 damage. He also likes to frolic through the flowers when the time's appropriate. Welcome, Duke. Pleasure to have you. Hey, we're happy to ha- what happy to be here? Yep, that's me. <laughs> we're we're I'm to a great, great at talking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we're keeping it light. I love it. I, love I know, it. yeah. yeah. Anyone Jerry's. who knows me or any followers know me. I'm notorious for just doing things like that. So perfect. Just no leave way. it in. <laughs> No, oh, no, sure. yeah, yeah. No, this is this is all natural here. It's organic. All natural. Don't, don't get out of any of that. <laughs> cool, no, man. No. All right, Duke. So we, like I mentioned, we have a couple quick questions so our audience can get to know you uh, right a little on. better before we jump into the meat of the episode, if you will. Uh, but so, how long have you been doing this, and what brought you to your industry? I have been doing this since I discover or I, I would want to say I've been doing this since 2010 when my parents finally allowed me to do a YouTube channel and I've just been making videos mainly for my friends uh, until I got out of high school and then I really started to push it uh, hopefully you know professionally and I winded up with one shot questers and now I've been doing it professionally and as of my full-time career for about uh, three years now. Wow. That's really awesome. Yeah, and for your parents for letting you make a YouTube channel, and and that's kind of good advice to anyone out there that has kids right now. Like, let your kids be creative and do their thing. Like, I'm mm-hmm. sure when you started making videos, when you were like, you know, whatever age that was, they were stupid and no one really oh, cared. Yeah. They were just for your friends, right? But like, look what that blossomed into. Like, you clearly right. love your job. You have this great career where you work from wherever the hell you want. And you get exactly. to play D and D role play stuff and just have fun. Like, that's amazing, right? Like you, you never would have told a kid that they could do that. I mean, I'm, I'm probably a little older than you, but like that, that <laughs> definitely wasn't an option. You know, when I was there, weren't like, oh, video games, yeah, get a job, like you know, tabletop board games. That's for the mm-hmm. devil, like you know, like, right? It's for the devil, <laughs> right? It's just the for the devil, panic not for us. I grew up in. <laughs> oh, dang. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Oh my god. I mean, you guys have all heard about that, right? I assume. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a cool. uh, it was it was rebroached in Stranger Things, actually. Oh the, yeah, the, the concept of like D and D being a satanic thing. Yeah, so yeah, like ridiculous. YouTube wasn't a thing when I was in high school, and when I wanted to try to play D and D, it was immediately squashed. Like, no, you can't do that. Like, Oof, that's the devil. Like, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't quite that bad, but it was pretty close. Anyway, right. I, I digress. All right, so what's top of mind in your industry right now? Oh, top of mind in my industry. Yeah, that, that maybe that's YouTube, maybe that's D and D. Either one works. Yeah. Um. Dang, that's a hard one. Um. Probably YouTube because I have always I YouTube was my first love, mm-hmm. and then D and D was just like a hobby I got into that I turned into a career, and so anything and everything I'm I'm trying to learn more about YouTube. Gotcha. Then uh, the Dungeons Dragons. Well, I, I should take that back a little bit because we have 
one D and D five point five D and D fifth edition rewritten. I don't know what they're trying to call it right now, but that's been coming out. But they, it's been just very slow. It's just okay. been very slow on the D and D side. So like, there's not a lot to do a lot of research on at the moment. So like, right. YouTube's always like, I can learn something new every day. So okay, yeah, and- I know, I know that um, wizards tried to to do some interesting stuff with the SRD, the uh, standard reference document that basically allows creators to just for anyone who doesn't know, they basically allows creators to pull D and D content to use sort of, um, I don't want to say royalty free, but it's, yeah. you know, you, it, it's a, it's a friendly license, a creative commons, friendly license mm-hmm. uh, type situation. Um, and they were trying to make some interesting revisions to that, but have since, yeah, not- so it's Whoa. gone the other direction. Yeah, yeah. They they actually pulled back on the the direction they were trying to go and kept the original one. But yeah, we'll 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 get to that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for clarity for our audience that aren't on the weeds, all in the weeds of this, we do have a fair amount of business audience. D and D is Dungeons and Dragons. Wizards is <laughs> Wizards of the Coast. Uh, yes. So just yes. Just yeah, for clarity of the game, we're going to be throwing a lot of acronyms around this episode. I'm sure. So. Uh, just I don't want people to be fully lost. <laughs> I'll do my best to explain things. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, cool. All right, and then tell us about a project that you're most proud of, uh, or a campaign, or you know what, you know, make that relevant to you. Unless you know, usually we're talking to someone that has a business or like as an artist. So he, this, uh, he's got a business. So, sorry, <laughs> I, got, I got a business. An yeah, an agency. I did not mean to throw any shade. An agency style business. Wow. The, well, the fuck? Okay. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, dang. Um, you. we've been able to have so many really cool projects. I can't really name. I can't really put down one. Uh, there was a point where the channel got very blessed, where we got like a good sum of money, and we were able to bless the D and D community by giving away free D and D products, and we were also able to give away quite a bit of money to a bunch of D and D streamers to help them with their channel and their careers, helping get more equipment. So that was really fun. But the one yeah. that came to my mind was we did an event where we had the D and D movie was coming out. This was back in March, cool. and we were like, "Great movie, but- hey." Oh, it was fantastic. We were like, hey, what if we do like a like a fan watch party? Like, let, let's do that. Let's let's see if that'll work. And we reached out to a theater and they're like, OK, yeah. So this one's going to be a big hit. So you got to run out like uh, either 155 seat theater or like a 244. And me and my me and my employee were like, like, that's a lot of people. We were thinking maybe like the 40 seat one. And luckily, our significant others jumped in and went like, no, you guys are dumb. You can do it. Like, get that doubt out of your mind. You can do it. And so we went in. Uh, we decided to do it. We were I, we were still unsure. But heck, we sold out all of the tickets in a matter of, like, I think two weeks. Wow. Yeah, Crazy. it was great. We, we had people fly down from Oklahoma. So I live in Texas. So we had people uh, drive all the way down or fly um, into Oklahoma and then come over to Texas to watch it with us. We wow. had one guy fly all the way from Alaska to be a part of this uh, watch party. Damn. Like it was, it was cool. Like the audience was just on another level. We got to meet so many great fans and the theater. Shout out to B and B Theaters. They really did a great job taking care of us. They made sure everyone was happy. They gave out like a bunch of free stuff to everyone because I think we were like one of the very few people who would come in and like rent out an entire theater. Yeah, right. Um, Yeah. So it was really, really cool. And I have not heard one bad complaint about it, which was amazing. It was just a ton of people coming in, saying hi, getting to meet, meet and greets, did giveaways. It was great. Like, I think that's probably one of my favorite ones we've done so far. Dude, yeah. that's amazing, and I think yeah. there's two, two things there that really stood out to me. One, uh, the the first, I'll just talk about them in order. Um, having a significant other that believes in you mm-hmm. more than you know yourself sometimes is absolutely crucial. So, like, that's oh, yeah. that's so great, and I and I and I always see that when people find the right partner, it really empowers them to be their best selves, which is beautiful. One hundred. The second part, holy shit! Like when you build a real community. 
Like, yeah. it really surprises you. Like, people flying from Alaska to Texas yeah. to watch a damn movie. Like, that's fucking insane. crazy. Oh, my yeah. God. But people love it. And they love what you do. And they mm-hmm. love this space. And they're diehard, raving, crazy fans that do uh-huh. ridiculous <laughs> shit. Like, fly from Alaska to Texas to watch a movie right. with a bunch of other people that speak their language, right? So there's something there yeah. about community building that people really need to hear. That's Absolutely. Massive. So, Absolutely. Cool. And so uh, speaking, you know, further toward that, today we're going to be discussing kind of what it took to build uh, a niche brand on YouTube, something around uh, specifically the Dungeons and Dragons or role-playing community, and just kind of helping to inspire people who are going to be on the same journey that you're, that you've been on for the last Mm -hmm. decade or so, and um, just kind of get a little bit of an inside, uh, insider knowledge on what that took for you and, and plug some some upcoming things that you've told us about that will be really fun. Sounds good. So uh, to start, Duke, what what do you think the hardest thing to do on YouTube, it, like in terms of whether that's growing an audience or being consistent or like what, what's the most difficult thing? Because obviously it's not playing D&D or doing the skits part right. of it. <laughs> right. So if you asked me a year ago, I would have said just getting recognized like on youtube like getting attention having the algorithm like build you up i would say that would have been the hardest thing and the thing to figure out now shorts are a thing for like short form content Mm -hmm. is very very popular it's on every single social media platform and now it's figuring out how those algorithms work and how you can build that audience because it's it's never been easier to become a content creator with shorts. Shorts are so easily consumable. You can get recognized almost immediately from it and your channel can take off if you ride, if you ride the wave. And now the hardest part is when you find that audience for your short form content is bringing them over to your traditional content mm-hmm. and trying to get them to watch that stuff and be fans of that as well. Because short form, well... Again, if you asked me like a month ago, I would say, oh yeah, short form doesn't like pay diddly squat. I'm now a part of some partner programs with Facebook and TikTok and they're paying us pretty decently. And I'm very surprised by that. And so it's like, oh crap, can short form actually be like a sustainable income at this point? Yeah, I, I, what know, if t- it's a- I know TikTok yeah. uh, recently increased like recently readjusted or revamped their yeah. short form revenue um streaming for creators and and i've, I've heard mm-hmm. it's very good it is so i'll share you guys mine right now so um so <laughs> they had you open your phone there's always like, i know and it's, just, it's like yeah god uh, knows what well it's i opened be. tiktok and one <laughs> yeah. of my friends is yelling and yeah. so it's like yeah, shut <laughs> up <laughs> um so with when TikTok first came out with their uh, fan base one, where they were like, we're putting in like $2 billion into this creator fund. Um, people really started, a lot of bigger creators really started to abuse that because they had the views, they had the mm-hmm. things that, w- they they know what the audience was waiting for and they used it at that time and, you know, got a decent paycheck. But that really hurt a lot of, all like that really hurt a lot of us smaller creators who, you know, are trying to make it big. Um, when... It first came out, I remember ha- having a video hit a million views in a day, and I was like, oh my gosh, how much am I going to get paid from this? And I think I got between like $45 to 60 bucks from that. And I was like, what? What? I was like, are you kidding me? Damn. So like YouTube, that would have been a nice paycheck if oh, it was yeah. like YouTube. What but would that like, be in YouTube, just for reference? Um, I have no idea. If I got a million view, if I got a million views on youtube with this with the rpm i have which is rate per minute yeah. um right i would have gotten 2500 dollars from that nice yeah from yeah so okay. a big difference yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but for tiktok now with their new creative program it i'm getting an rpm of 75 cents every thousand views which wow, wow. is insane and the first video we posted i made uh like after it ran its course, I made on the first day 150 bucks. Wow. 
And I think it got, um, yeah, at first it was like a dollar RPM. Now it's like slowly dropping now that I'm posting more. But like, yeah, I'm making about a dollar every thousand views on TikTok right now. And it's like, that is insane. Like you hit a million views on TikTok now. If the ad, they, they have qualified views, which I feel like is very fair. Um, but like if I get a million views and all of them are like qualified views, that's a thousand dollars on TikTok. And it's just like, holy Holy crap. And it's so easy to get views on short right. form content Yeah, I mean, too. we're talking yeah. about a 30 second video with very, exactly. fairly minimal effort in the grand scheme of like right. YouTube video, like in in comparison. Yeah. Uh, but actually, um, TikTok, it has to be over a minute for these videos to count. Oh. Yes. So um, <laughs> right now, me and my editor, who, who's right next to me working on things right now, we're going to be doing like a 30 day TikTok short challenge where we're trying to just pulling a bunch of compilations, pulling a lot of like old videos that did well on YouTube, putting them as short form, getting them just over that one minute mark. And we're doing a 30 day challenge just to see where that goes. And we're almost at a million followers on TikTok too. And so it's like, all right, let's just push and get to the million yeah. right then and there. So nice. Thank How you. many followers do you have on YouTube? Uh, I have 640,000. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's Hell yeah. Wow. That's it, it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. great, yeah. I Started mean, especially with... especially at, I mean, your your competition, I imagine it has an incredibly wide gap. Yeah. From that, right? I mean, you basically have critical role and then yeah. you have <laughs> you know, creators who are, you know, in the thousands and not mm -hmm. not hundreds of thousands. Yeah, um, so <laughs> it, it's funny that you mentioned that because I have a very good example for this and, and no no shame to any of these like channels i'm about to mention if anything giving them a shout out they deserve it i love watching their channels yeah um there is a reward event that's happening at gen con this year and the reward events called the crit awards and my channel has is in the finales of being the best legacy channel on youtube for the past two years for ttrpg spaces my competition is one guy who has about 200,000 followers. His name's Offbeat Outlaw. And he really doesn't dive too much into the D&D &D space anymore from what I... I don't know. He said he hasn't, and then he, like, jumped right back into it. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sure what this guy's doing right now. Still love him. He's great. He's a good friend. Um, and then there's an, another one called Quested Chaos, who's at, like, 15,000 on uh, YouTube. Oh, wow. And then there's another one. I can't remember, but they're, like, 26 thousand on youtube and so like there's me with 640,000. Yeah, the, the gap is real it's it's pretty big <laughs> yeah wow and just for the audience ttrpg is tabletop role-playing game thank you yeah. no worries i'm, I'm just catching them because i you guys are both so in the weeds on this shit that like that's actually just a normal word for you like, right <laughs> yeah right yeah no you're right yeah, I mean, I've been uh, just, I don't think I've ever mentioned this on the actual podcast, but I've been uh, DMing, uh, so I've been running a D&D &D game or D&D &D games for like a cumulative decade or so uh, with just friends and family and stuff. And I'm responsible for creating the storylines and the campaigns and the maps and all that mm -hmm. stuff. The only uh, game I've ever played was Ross did a one shot for me and my my cousin and, and his partner and um, my son and my best friend. And we did a one shot of my uh like I don't know, hadn't been was it been like seven months eight months something like that yeah yeah I don't know but it was fun <laughs> I always wanted to play nice no it's great anyone like it's not just a great game but it's just a great way for friends to get together and just hang out yeah well you get to see a lot of character and personality from people especially like forcing them out of their comfort zone and doing a little voice acting and trying to actually like oh yeah in the, in the space you know we people some people aren't aren't don't ever do that like they're very mm. you know um stoic and it just forces people out of that space which is which is really cool so. it also it also really reinforces um collaborative problem solving and creative problem mm -hmm. solving right like if you have a really creative um sort of inspired dm who's willing to put in the time on the back end because it's hours and hours of time on the back end to plan mm -hmm. these games in a way that like makes them really engaging and fun and um there, there could be a lot of really interesting collaboration that uh, you would have never gotten to experience in the real world with your friends mm -hmm. or family or even just, you know, co-players. Um, and I think it, it, it works kind of like a team building exercise. I was that thinking that. Get. 
yeah that you might then you might end up with in like even in a corporate environment right? so like who who's putting out like the corporate like D D one shot like training team like we're gonna come in and do a team building exercise with you and all your <laughs> stuffy corporate people here and we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do D D, and your boss is gonna be like the the troglodyte troll you guys have to fight <laughs> like you know oh, yeah. like <laughs> like that, that would be amazing i think there's a market for that but i don't know maybe i'm Maybe I'm uh, delusional, but I think that could be cool. You can have that one, dude. That's all, dude. Just take it. Okay, all right, sounds good. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. do it right now with with my Beca- employees. Becomes multimillionaire. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You get hired by Google and like Samsung and you know Verizon right. to fly out there. <clears throat> dude, there might be something there. Anyways, so yeah. um, I I want like so. What do you think was the biggest kind of moment like? in the rise of your YouTube channel. And then we can talk mm-hmm. about TikTok as well, but I think TikTok's probably more recent compared to YouTube in terms of like, did you build your YouTube community first and then sort of like I... of that to get on TikTok or? So that's a very good question. So I was on YouTube for so long. And then, so I had a channel before One Shot Questers called Dude I Films. That was my startup channel. That's the channel where I made all of my mistakes, where I learned and then made One Shot Questers and it blew up. But it didn't happen organically. I actually jumped on TikTok um, and started making videos over there. And that's where my comedy and the attention for the channel started really taking off. I think my fifth video I posted it went viral. And then after that, I was like, oh, okay. And so I st- I kept making like one a day and like another one went viral. Another one went viral. And I was like, oh, I hit an algorithm that I didn't know was here. And so like I started learning how what the algorithm likes, what doesn't like. And in about a month, I hit 100,000 followers on TikTok, which was insane. Oh. And then um, like almost every month after that, I was hitting like 100,000, 100,000, 100,000 and like started getting the majority of that audience. Then obviously it started slowing down. But now D&D is like, I almost say I, I almost want to say D&D is almost like a, a main part in the TikTok uh, community feed because there's just like I don't know. I feel like we kind of did a little takeover with it. Um, but yeah, I, I, once I build up my TikTok audience, I was telling everyone to go over to my YouTube, like go subscribe, go over here. This is where you need to like see all like the good stuff. And people started doing it and it took a little bit, but you know what? It it paid off in the end. Wow. So what, what, what did that conversion look like? Like uh, obviously yeah. you didn't just create a video that just yeah. straight up said, hey guys, I have a YouTube video, do this. Uh, yeah. So you, uh, you know, obviously, you're doing your sketch comedy on TikTok. That's yeah. pretty self-explanatory. The the algorithm on TikTok is incredibly organic friendly compared to YouTube. Um, I would imagine at least at no. least uh, no, really, <laughs> no. Interesting. TikTok is so okay. So like, so debunk that a little bit for me. Yeah, I'm gonna debunk yeah. that. Uh, but let me answer your first question. Uh, the transition with that was I would make a video saying like hey we go check out my youtube channel or like hey are you learning if are you wanting to learn dungeons and dragons head over to my channel and i will teach you how to play dungeons and dragons so that was the start of it hmm. and then i um um after doing things like that i would start posting little snippets of the comedy sketches that we would do and so i would say like if you want to watch the full video go over to the YouTube mm. channel. And so I started doing that and that actually did fairly well. Okay. So get um, little bites, get people excited and like, Hey, the whole sandwich is over here. So, okay. Yeah. Like so, it. um, one second, my wife is, isn't trying to get in the camera shot right now. She's currently crawling on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> my wife does stand the up. Same. It's fine. My wife does the same shit. It's great. Like my kid will do it too. Trying to like, hi- like take the dogs out, you know? No, that's great. Yeah, she she's a big part of this. She's the one who introduced me to D. So you get up on the show. Get, yeah. <laughs> Pass by, jeez. I'm hearing like I'm hearing something to my right, and I'm hearing giggling going on. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> you can come on. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for supporting the the uh, movie theater idea. Oh, they she... said huh. they said thanks for they said hello and thanks for supporting the movie theater idea. <laughs> she said are you mean pushing the movie theater plan along so yeah (laughs) love it that's right she believed in the idea and you yeah your ability right so that's amazing Uh uh-huh okay so moving on to the next part of debunking the algorithm with uh between tiktok and youtube youtube will reward you if 
you come up with something clever and eye-catching. Okay. And so, like, that's where Ryan Trahan has really started going well. That's why Mr. Beast started blowing up. He did something new. He did something eye-catching. He did something original. And mm -hmm. so those videos usually do very, very well. TikTok algorithm, and you could you could go on TikTok right now, and you will be able to know what the trend is at the moment. You TikTok will reward you for following the trends. Mm, okay. And that's what's hard because, like, I open up TikTok and I see the same. So as of right now, time of recording this, it's like the it's it's Bill Hader doing this dance and there's like this music going on and it's it's the same video from almost everyone who's posting it same cutout of bill Hader dancing and it's just different text and those videos do really well and you get rewarded and the algorithm push that out because it's what's trending and if you try to do something usually outside of that usually doesn't do very well mm. and so that tiktok is the, the I think this is the right word, but like TikTok is very like communist. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. Like that's how it feels. Like, oh, you gotta follow the trends. All right, I'll do this. Oh, the channel's blowing up. I have over I almost have a million followers. Okay, I'm gonna make a video uh letting people know where to find me in case like something happens. Okay, cool. This video only got a thousand views. What? <laughs> right. Yeah. So like it's TikTok literally looks at your stuff and picks and choose what's going to get pushed out and what doesn't get pushed out to your audience. And it's very frustrating. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I've uh, I've been trying to build up my TikTok um, at Colorful Carl. And uh, I just make art reveals and do like before and afters. And uh, I, I, we were ha having trouble getting any traction until I just started yeah. paying to boost some things, right? And then we went from like, you know, 100 followers to 1,000. And mm -hmm. now I'm still, you know, like 1,100, but I stopped paying to boost. But like, it's right. still increasing, but it's, yeah, like it's it seems very pay to play to me, like a lot, but I, I, have, I haven't got anything that's like hit viral or anything of that nature yet. So yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's like, if you want to do like the hit viral stuff, which the, again, this sucks is you got to do what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Right. And, and that as like us as creators, is it fun? Like we, we want to be creative. Like sometimes following the trends is. that is entirely different than anybody else um yeah and that's what i've been that, that's what i heard that tiktok does a very good job at building your organic feed for you and interest yes the way that you like things right so like the only D, &D follower in my tiktok is two johns right like you know right. john's page so um <laughs> that's interesting so yeah and and i think that to be able to do what you're suggesting duke you need yeah. to first find a bubble yep because then you won't you you won't know what the trend in your niche is unless yes. you successfully infiltrate it, right? Right. And that can be that that can be done yeah. by just following and viewing and liking and saving videos in that niche, right? Like yep. you can force the algorithm to think, oh, I want to be here. And then you'll start seeing, you know, whether if it's D D, then you'll start seeing Dungeons and Dragons trends. Yeah. Or you'll, if it's art, you'll start seeing artist trends. If it's business, you'll start seeing business trends and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Um, so I think that is also a sort of a caveat to what you're saying is that, you know, you you do need to do what everybody else is doing uh, in order to catch the way the algorithmic waves that TikTok kind of pushes out for everybody every once in a while. 
but mm-hmm. the you need to first know that what you're doing is actually in the correct pool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For sure. Cool. So there there's been some videos that I have found I think for the D&D community and we have found and I've seen a lot of other creators starting to take this and do kind of like my style of things which is like oh thank you <laughs> um but like list type of videos have done really stupid well on tiktok mm-hmm. and also like <laughs> the, there's there's like videos that i really made popularize uh i really found it and took off with it was you'd roll like a d20 you'd roll like a natural one so meaning just mm-hmm. you roll the one on the d20 and then or if you roll the d or, or nat 20 which is rolling just a straight 20 on the dice you like either the worst thing would happen for the nat one or the the total opposite thing you thing you think is going to happen is going to happen but if you roll a nat 20 let's say like i'm cleaning i'm trying to clean the house i roll a nat 20 the house cleans itself for me like those right. videos did really really well wow and so cool. a lot of people started building off of that so at the same time like it's never a bad thing to experiment as well because you could find things that the algorithm likes and then you create your own little bubble of things, which you is really start, cool. You start a trend in a wave and you're yes. on top of it as opposed to under it. Exactly, uh, exactly. And so, yeah, there, there is, I'm sure that there is, and, and I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but creating stuff sort of serially, like as a ser- as series uh, um, mm-hmm. helps with that, I would, I would assume. Oh, yeah. So oh, like, yeah, if 100%. You, if you do this, the the Nat one or Nat twenty video, doing it ten times now, TikTok has this inkling of like, oh, you're trying to make this a thing, right? You know, yes. and and now it pushes it as, oh, like you should follow this trend. Mm-hmm. But th- there is a downside to doing that as well. Oh yeah. So this i've seen a lot of creators uh suffer from this especially on the tiktok side is they will do the exact same thing all the time so i'll get i'll give you a really good example so there was this there was this dancing trend uh going on and there was this one dancer who would dance to the same song and do the same dance every time but people in the comment section would be like all right now do it like with 100 percent emotion and like zero percent dance now like do like 50% mm. dance and like 10% emotion, things like that. And so this to keep things you know fresh and new and make people fans of this other stuff i'm doing oh, cool. and so that that's just another thing to point out like it's good to have a series but don't make it the whole channel because if you try to do something else i've seen it way too many times where the, everyone builds on this one thing and once they stop it just everything tanks hard yeah i mean and then john, they're like john ran into that problem where yeah. basically they're um he he was doing this like you know talks to himself type content yeah and then he tried promoting supernal the comic that we made Mm -hmm. together the couple episodes we made together and um it got like zero engagement like negative (laughs) engagement Uh, people took away likes and views yeah exactly (laughs) lost followers it ate it ate likes from previous videos right infectious now But um, but yeah, he was like, dude, I don't think I can do this on my channel. It doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. if I have twenty thousand followers. Um, uh huh. None of that. None of it's getting pushed. And so I do, I totally totally get that. And I think diversifying 
the content you have into buckets where you have several series and then you follow some trends and things like that mm-hmm. might be the best way to go. And YouTube is like that too, isn't it? Where you kind of, if you, if your whole channel is one thing yeah. and then you deviate from that, it just gets tanked. At least that's what I've heard from other creators. Yeah. So that's the same side with YouTube. Like I have, like I have my sketch comedy stuff and everyone who has subscribed to the channel is expecting sketch comedy um videos for me every time i post if i post anything else the videos just tank like they don't do very well it's hard to get over twenty thousand views at times where my videos are easily getting over um well <laughs> back before wizards of the coast stuff happened i was getting like over a hundred thousand views in a day on a video i would post things were going really really well and um if I posted something other than that, it just didn't take off. People didn't really like click on it. And it just was like, uh, I mean, it happens again. People subscribe for the thing you are, that they are watching for. And if you start posting things that they didn't ask for, they're not going to click on it. Cause it's like, Oh, I didn't like, this isn't something I was wanting. So I don't really care for it. And that's like, that's just human nature. That like that's like you guys following an art channel and they decided to play a game. And you're probably gonna be like, I'm not gonna watch them play a game. I wanna watch them make art. So Yep. Yep, totally. And that's what that's what multiple channels helps with, right? Is exactly. It, it allows yeah. you to diversify your interests without diversifying your channel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a question. Are there any like tools or, or pieces of software or anything that you use on a regular basis that would help being, you know, help this, these types of like content? I mean, I'm not talking about like video editing or anything like that, but yeah. like anything reference to like the actual social platforms or how to find trends or good hashtags or even like, you know, mm-hmm. how to plug in the right metadata, that kind of stuff. So I, uh, it, it's that the, the it's kind of a hard question because like everything is changing all the time sure. and advice and blogs and things like that can become very outdated in a week. <laughs> it, it, it's very, very difficult, but there's one program that I use all the time and it's mainly for YouTube. It's called vid IQ. So it's V I D I Q. Um, I can't remember if it's like com or something like that, but if you type in vid IQ, you'll find it. Sure. Um, but it's an extension that goes onto your browser and it will give you details on video, like a, a scoring detail on videos. And in the actual vidIQ site as well, you will have, um, it'll give you like a bunch of different analytics. Like one is you can put in like competition, like uh, who you view as your uh, competitors and you can pop them into this, uh, this, ch- this like competitive section of vidIQ and see how they're doing versus how you're doing what are they doing right like how their views doing how their view counts going compared to like yours and so there's that there's also vidIQ like does give you things of like if i type in dnd it will give me like a search score being like oh the dnd is like a 57 out of 100 like people like aren't searching for it but people are searching for it so so it's like right in the middle but if I like type in like Dungeons and Dragons, it could like jump up to like an 86 and people are like, oh, people are t- looking for Dungeons and Dragons. And so after looking at all that stuff, when you post a video, you can go into the tags spot and see what people are searching for in Dungeons and Dragons and start um, tagging your videos with that. And then that way, people who are tagging these certain uh, or searching for these certain tags could stumble upon your video. Oh, right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that that's and, and with that with that sort of stuff, do you have you seen that it's so specific that like Dungeons and Dragon versus Dungeons and Dragons are different tags or are they uh, No, obviously I, I, D&D and Dungeons and yeah. Dragons are different. Yeah. They're, they're wildly different strings of text. So I, I'm not 100% sure yet, but my gut wants to say if I typed in Dungeons and Dragon or Dungeons and Dragons, if you typed in Dungeon and Dragon, it would still pull up like a Dungeons and Dragons thing. Because I think it's like right. the, the tag recognizes, oh, you typed in Dungeon and, and, and then Dragon. You just didn't put the two S's. It seems like you're looking for this thing. Right. 
And so it's similar, so they're going to still push it out to you. So, like, here, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot right now. I'm going to see what pulls up. Hell yeah. If my internet will allow me. <laughs> it never performs when you need it to. <laughs> I know. Now let's go on my phone. Let's see. Dungeon I stream very uh, once dragon. a week. There's always, like, my internet's working fine, then I start streaming, and it's like all, all the things start going crazy sometimes. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, everything that's popping up is, uh, I typed in Dungeon and Dragon, and literally everything coming up is Dungeons and Dragon stuff. Okay. So I don't think it really matters as long as you get, like, the full word in there. Makes sense. But yeah, no, Vid, Vid IQ is a great recommendation. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And uh, we are we are coming up on time, so I okay. We did have one uh, one last question for you, Carl. You want to take that? Yeah, um, we were just <laughs> sorry. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that was a bad call. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. I, what we like to do is just you know, are there any big inspirations or people along the way that helps you get to somewhere that you'd like to give a shout out to and share some love? Yeah, um, he's a, I like to say a recently like new good friend because okay. we really connected over um, an event we did in uh, back in uh, May. But his name is Dead Aussie Gamer. Absolutely love him. He's an Australian content creator, mainly streams over on Twitch. But the dude reached out to me just like randomly one day, didn't know who he was. And we just started talking. We actually kicked it off pretty well. And then he's been wanting to be a part of the channel. He's been helping support the channel. He's actually a dungeon master in our upcoming uh, campaign series that we're doing that we're really excited for. He's just he's very interested in the story and is just wanting to do it just to hopefully see it succeed. Oh, cool. And he's like always messaging us, making sure like we're doing good. Like he's just a genuine dude. He's a fantastic dude. And the best part about it, he's so genuine and so loving that like, when his Australian side comes out of him, it's just makes it so hilarious. Like, I love it. Nah, he he's great. Go find him. Go find him on Twitch. Go watch his stuff. And I I absolutely love him to death. But I get to see him at Jed Con this year, and so it, it's really cool. I get to see him twice in a year. Hell yeah! And and you want to go ahead and quickly plug that upcoming thing that you were talking about? Yes. So we are finally coming out with a. Um, D and D uh, campaign, which is going to be in podcast form, uh, but it's not like Dungeons and Dragons campaign. So what we're actually doing is there is another tabletop system called City of Mist, mm -hmm. and we're going to be playing that, but it's going to have a Dungeons and Dragons theme to it. The main reason why we went with City of Mist is because it just has a simpler system, so that people who are listening can easily just follow along, and we don't have to keep stopping and asking questions about what things do oh mm -hmm. does this work because that happens at dungeons and dragons when we played city of mist we did not really break the flow at all unless we were doing some training with something but so yeah that is gonna start filming we're gonna start recording next week and then episodes should start coming out in august so thank you really looking forward to it yeah i love that very yeah, cool. which the, by the by the time this comes out, that'll probably it'll probably be launched. So, it probably yeah. We've, so, got, we've got a bit of a backlog of uh, episodes. So by the time this comes out, I'm I'm pretty sure it'll be uh, you'll be into episode a couple episodes. I probably yeah yeah heck Very yeah. Cool. So go check that out for sure. And a uh, big shout out to John Deindorfer who connected us with you. You guys are we're all friends of John. John is a <laughs> uh, part of our company here at Epic Made and handles a lot of the uh, yep. some of our marketing stuff and then just a lot of our business development. And he's just an amazing dude. And he's got a channel but bet at between two Johns on TikTok where you can check out his D and D content as well. So yep, he also does kind of sketch comedy adjacent uh, D and D content and fantasy content. Sure. I, I think I think um, probably similar to to Duke's content. Yeah, you don't really need to know the game to appreciate the content. Like as long as you yes. have anything to do with fantasy or even in some cases just like jokes, um, you'll you'll pick up on what's what the the punchline is. For sure. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much, Duke. We really uh, really had a lot of fun having you here. Uh, it's been a 
welcome break from uh <laughs> from uh, from kind of the art business side of things right or in the content creation side of things yeah which i think is also an incredibly uh important part of anyone who runs a business yes just uh i, I think that everything we talked about today is directly applicable whether you're running a D D channel or you're running a accounting channel um so for sure you know we'd much rather be talking about the the D side of things too so <laughs> right i love i absolutely love talking about the business stuff because yeah. i i think like in my niche of friends i think i'm the only one who's really like really invested into the business side everyone else is more of like the community and just kind of doing it more for like the ride but mm -hmm. for me i'm like very more like this is a business this is what i want to do for the rest of my life and so like yeah i love talking about this stuff yeah and if you don't take the business side serious you won't make enough money like, exactly <laughs> yeah which which means that you won't be able to do this forever mm -hmm. you know like if you don't make enough money to sustain the workload then you end up not being able to do it and that's just kind of how it is exactly yeah absolutely well cool. thanks so much guys uh super super fun conversation duke we definitely gotta have you on again and talk some more about absolutely uh, talk some more about stuff so we will uh, we'll reach out with you and set something up. But uh, thanks for being on the show this time. And uh, mm -hmm. until next time, everybody. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. We really hope you enjoyed the show. Please like and subscribe to join us on our next journey through the world of art and business on the Pixel Retentive Podcast. <laughs>